Hey everyone, uh, I've got a bit of a deeper voice than normal. I'm battling a cold, but that won't stop us. We're going to talk about one of the, what I think is one of the more confusing parts of CSS. If we put something like Flexbox aside, Flexbox is, you know, 10 different properties. They're all horribly named and confusing, but this is pound for pound, one of the more confusing parts of CSS. I'm talking about the before and after pseudo elements. So these are, you know, two things we tack on to selectors. Uh, pseudo elements have two colons, so you may have seen them before. Things like uh, first letter. They allow me to select and work with a portion of content, a portion of an element. So I've got a paragraph here in this code pen. It's just centered and, you know, I changed the font and font size. And if I style first letter and I give it a different color, color of magenta, if I can spell it, there we go. I'm working with that one part of that element. Uh, there's also a first line. So if I had multiple lines in this, there's only one, but let's say I had a bunch. I'm only going to style, come on, the first line. Okay, so those are two examples of pseudo elements, more straightforward ones. But what does it mean when I do colon colon before or colon colon after? Well, right now we won't see anything. So let's step back and talk about what they do. The before pseudo element will insert a piece of content before our element's content that we can then style. But it won't do that until I specify a content property. So if I added in, I don't know, three exclamation points here as the content, you'll see that I now have three exclamation points inserted before my paragraph's text, my dog is a psycho. Or if I used after, you'll see that it goes after that content. Now, it's really important to understand that if we just look at the DOM here, inside of our paragraph, our content is inside the paragraph. So it is not inserted before the paragraph or after the whole element. It is before the content, but it's still inside the paragraph. You can see that pseudo element right there. So this is not a good use for a pseudo element, just adding exclamation points, uh, especially if it was something like this after, and I just wanted exclamation points after my dog is a psycho, why would I not just put them right there? Generally, you wanna avoid using these pseudo elements for actual important content, right? You just put that in your HTML, it's more accessible, it's not some weird jank situation where it's coming from CSS like it is right now, right? If I had, my cats are also psychos. It's added in, we see it, but it's not in the markup. It's not in the HTML. It's just not a good idea. So what is a good idea? What do we do with these pseudo elements? Well, I'm gonna have a whole video on some top use cases, some really common situations, but I'll just show you one here. We can use the pseudo elements to insert cosmetic content, stuff that is not important to the understanding, to the meaning of our elements, but is uh, cosmetically interesting, I guess. So we can do things like have an empty content uh, property, which will make us an empty piece of content that I can give a background color and a height. I'm gonna do that quickly, like this right here. Nothing stunning, but uh, I've got this empty content, which just makes me a box, right? I give it display of block, maybe 10 pixels is better. And then I give it a width, a background color, and there it is right below our content. So it is just some nice little styling, I guess. I could have put a, a, an empty div here and, and achieved the same effect, but there's no reason to clutter my markup just for a cosmetic enhancement. Or another example would be adding decorative quotation marks. So if I wanted a really large quote right here, I don't necessarily want to have the quote in my markup. I guess I could wrap it in a span and style it and make it bigger, but it's mostly cosmetic. It's not important that that quote is in the markup. So what I could do, I can even get fancier. The content property uh, will take any string like this, but it also accepts fancy uh, values like open dash quote. And I'm gonna do the open quote before, not after. So let's put it before. Uh, and then I'm gonna position it absolutely, which means I need to uh, position my paragraph element relative. And then I'm gonna give it some font size. How about uh, eight or 10 R REM font dash size. All right, so there's our quote. Let me give it a color just to start of maybe gray. And now I'm gonna move it up over here. 
So I'll say the top should be negative, uh, I don't know, three rems, negative two rems, something like that. And then the left is going to be negative four rems. Somewhere, something along those lines. Maybe that's too far, maybe 3.5. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But now I have this quotation mark that is independent. I can style, I can do whatever I want thanks to this before pseudo element. But I don't, I don't have to bother putting it in my markup. And I could do the same thing for after, of course. And I have this nice little cosmetic quote that I can move around. I can make it larger, smaller, move it up or down. It's just like any other piece of content, except it's associated with this paragraph's content. It comes right before the paragraph's content. And then I could do this again. It probably would not look good if I did it with the same uh, styles, but if I did after, I could add in a close quote, but then I'm gonna need to move the quote because it's right here, which looks terrible. But I could then move it over to the right. Like that, maybe that looks okay. I don't know. I'd probably move it down as well. I don't know. Does that look good? Maybe, maybe not, who knows. But either way, that is the before and after pseudo elements. It's how they work. Um, we have to set the content property to either be a string or things like close quote, open quote. You can even make it an image or you can make it an empty string. Uh, so you have just like a blank slate that you can move around as a box. You can change the size, the color, the position, all of that stuff. So I'll have a separate video to show some common use cases, but hopefully you got a, a taste at least of what we can do here. Again, the point is cosmetic enhancements. We don't want to include important content via CSS. That should all go in our markup. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, and enduring my scratchy voice. Please make sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more content, and definitely uh, shave off all your hair, turn it into a wig, and mail it to me, please. All right, I look forward to seeing those wigs. Thanks.